Welcome to Aircon Academy. The other day I had a question uh, from one of you guys about heat pump. How is it that a heat pump can actually heat up the house? Well, it's very complicated. There are a lot of steps that go behind it, but I'm going to try to sim simplify it. I'm going to try to explain it so that it doesn't take very long and it gives you the, the idea as to how it works. First, we know that just like in any air conditioning system, you're going to have the outdoor unit. This outdoor unit is going to have your condenser fan right there and inside of it we're going to have your compressor like this. This compressor is going to put the gas out and it's going to go to the outdoor coil. From this outdoor coil it's going to come through here and it's going to travel through the liquid line into the house where the metering device is to the indoor coil and then back here to the compressor like this. So we still have the four basic parts the compressor, the condenser, the metering device and the evaporator. We're going to draw a wall here and there's our plenum there's your air handling unit right here this fan is going to blow air through here you have your coil here and just in case you happen to have one there's your little kitty cat right there so now we're in the house so you have your four basic components here on this side we're going to have high pressure, superheated refrigerant vapor leaving the compressor. It's going to be leaving the compressor going out here. It's going to be around, let's say, I don't know, let's say 200 degrees Fahrenheit. 200 degrees Fahrenheit coming out going to the outdoor unit is going to give off the heat to the outside air, turn it into liquid, come in here, and we're going to have, let's say, 75 degrees return air temperature coming in here and it's going to be going out let's say around 55 degrees your supply air temperature so this is what's happening in your air conditioning system but now to turn this into a heat pump the main thing that we need is going to be what they call a reversing valve your reversing valve basically would be right here now this reversing valve is going to receive the gas that's coming out of here and it's going to reroute it. It's going to reroute it from here. It's going to reroute it from here to this other line and this other line is going to bring it on out to the end or coil. So now this coil is going to be acting like a condenser basically comes in as high pressure superheated vapor and it's going to come out as high pressure subcooled liquid coming back through my liquid line and on this side we're going to need a metering device right here this metering device creates a pressure drop so that now we can absorb heat from the outside this is going to be rerouted like this and then is going to come down right into what we call the accumulator. The accumulator is going to make sure that no liquid gets back to the compressor. Comes to the compressor, gets compressed and then high pressure superheated vapor comes this way, goes to the indoor coil, gives off the heat. So now what happens is air is coming in here let's say it's winter time so let's say 72 73 degrees and it's coming out at let's say 90 or 95 degrees heating up the room like this the refrigerant has condensed turned into a liquid comes back through my liquid line goes through this metering device creates a pressure drop and brings it back to the reversing valve comes back to the accumulator and back to the compressor. Now what happens is 
at some point you're going to want cooling again. So now this refrigerant is going to be rerouted from here to the outdoor coil so that this can condense it. On this side here, what we're going to do is we're going to have a check valve. This check valve will allow flow in only one direction. So now it goes around the metering device through my liquid line coming this way up in here. This creates a pressure drop. This acts like an evaporator, cools the air down. So now we can cool the room down, comes back as a gas through here to the reversing valve, makes a U-turn, comes back to the accumulator and back to the compressor. Now we have a metering device and a check valve. Here we're also going to need a metering device and a check valve like this. So now we have two check valves, two metering devices, a reversing valve right here. Some people call this a four-way valve or they call it a reversing valve. I myself, I call it a reversing valve. And those are some of the differences between an AC unit and a heat pump. This was a very quick, very fast overview as to the difference between an air conditioning system and a heat pump. So these are your major components here, 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 and here. Now remember, all of these, some engineer has designed the system, so they have to be the correct ones for this system, for this tonnage, and for this refrigerant. So hope, hopefully this helped. Hopefully this helped you understand the uh, heat pump cycle. And please, I hope you liked the video. And check out my other videos on YouTube and uh, take a look at Aircon Academy. Thank you.